What's up everybody, NFX here with another tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to talk about doing scratches using the FL Studio Wave Traveler. Um, it's really easy to, um, to do the scratches using the Wave Traveler. And what I want to do is uh, to give us a starting point, I want to play a little piece of a song that uh, helped to bring scratching to the forefront. The song is called Rocket and it was originally uh, recorded by Herbie Hancock in the, uh, in the 80s. So that's just a piece of the song um, you know, it's, uh, it scratches, there's, there are scratches throughout the entire song in that thing. And, uh, it really was a breakthrough song, uh, as well as a video, actually. Uh, for those of you who are listening, probably don't remember, uh, you know, back when MTV first started, this was one of the, uh, one of the more popular videos out there. Um, but anyway, um, what I want to do is try to recreate the first four bars of that particular um, song. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, what I've done. I'll bring up the Wave Traveler. And in the Wave Traveler, what you do is you have a bunch of keys and you can assign uh, each key a sequence of uh, events that will, that can, I should say, produce scratching noises. You can use it for more than just scratching type noises. I mean you can use it for just doing some really wild effects on a wave, uh, on a wave audio file. But I'm just going to briefly explain to you what the Wave Traveler is about. Uh, what you do is you load up a, uh, a sound into the Wave Traveler. In this case I've loaded up the, uh, the fresh uh, sample and then, uh, if you notice, there are, there's a grid here, and this grid represents basically the same thing that the step sequencer represents, one bar of music. Um, by default, this is how it appears with, uh, with four beats, with these first four squares being the one beat, these next ones being the two beat, the three, and then the four. And the red line indicates the direction and speed that the wave is traveling. So if I was to play this now, it would attempt to play the fresh sample, which you see here, across four beats. And you can hear that it, it stretched out the sound quite a bit. And this particular sample, played at that speed, is, uh, you know, is not right. So what we need to do if we want it to sound right is we need to... Um, we need to tell it to play faster and the way we do that is we just make this line if you notice this line here instead of going all the way over to here we make it go up faster but then there's some more uh, data that it's going to play that we don't necessarily want so um, what I'm going to do is just take it all the way up so let's listen to what it sounds like And that's close to what the uh, what the sound uh, is like played fully through. But what this uh, what this really does for us is it allows us to simulate forward and backward motion on a turntable. Forward motion is a upper upward movement of this line, and by upward, I, everything moves from the left to the right. That's time. So everything's always going to start on the left and move to the right. So your line is either going to go up or down. You know, or it might go flat, but I mean, if it's going up, that means it's going forward. And if it's going down, that means it's going backwards. So if we were to play this, for example, like so, this would play that same sample um, backwards. Okay. So, with that in mind, we're basically doing the same thing a DJ does when he does a push or a pull 
on the on the turntable. So now you can see I've, I'm going forward and and then backwards. Okay, and if I speed that up a little bit by making the forward and back motion take up less time, that's going to speed it up. You know, that kind of sounds like a scratch. I mean, there's a lot more to uh, to doing scratches than, than just that. Um, for example, I'm using a linear uh, line, which means it's just a straight line, but if you did like a half cosine on these two things, you'll notice they take a slightly different shape. It's kind of curved in, curved out. And what that's uh, simulating is starting off slow, then going fast, and then slowing down, and then going fast, and then slowing down, which is more of a natural movement sometimes for a DJ, because as he's, as he's um, pulling the record back, in other words, he's going forward, then he's pulling the record back, he's actually slowing down his fingers for the pullback. So let's take a listen. And that sounds a little bit... Uh, more natural. It's kind of fast, so why don't we stretch it back out again, and we could even tell it not to play so much of the wave, and that actually sounds more like just a, a, a simple scratch, although it's a little bit uh, um, slower than you know a DJ would normally play, but this illustrates what I'm talking about. This is a push, this is a pull. Now, in addition to pushing a record and pulling a record at different speeds, um, like here you, it's a slow pull, but if I was to stretch this thing out like that, it would be really fast, or it would play the sample back really fast. See, and then it sounds much different than if it was, you know, down around here. So you can get different sounds out of it. That's how much of the record the, the DJ would actually be pushing or pulling. But what I want to show you is also the, the DJ has a fader. And with the fader, what he can do is actually cut the sound out. So he can push forward, cut the sound out, pull back, put the fader back so that there's sound, and push forward again. And that would allow him to do you know two forwards uh, scratches instead of a forward back forward, um, which allows you to do various um, rhythms with the scratch. So for example, if I had this, if I took this scratch and then I added another another one next to it, and this is going to be a kind of a basic uh, wobble type uh, type sound, although it's going to be a little slow, but take a listen. Okay, what I could do by to simulate a fader is mute out this part of of the uh, of the sound, and the way you do that is simply by selecting it. And you can see that this bar on the bottom turned black in this section, which means it is now muted out. So now you hear a, a forward motion, but you don't hear the, this backward motion. Then you hear the forward and backward again. And you can do a lot of interesting things this way. You can, for example, mute out little sections of it while it's going forward and then while it's coming back down and get an interesting sound out of it you know little things like that and then obviously you can string these type of sounds together and come up with uh, pretty complex sequences but let's get back to the rocket scratches on the rocket scratches I want to like I said, I want to recreate the first four bars. So what I'm going to do is show you the first bar, which I have here. And you can see I've got upward motion, I've got downward motion, I've got some parts muted out where the fader would uh, prevent sound from coming through. Let's take a listen to this. Okay, that's the first part. Here's the second part. Uh, which I've assigned to the next key over, which would be a D5. And then the next bar, which I've assigned to the E5 key. And then actually the fourth bar is a repeat of the first bar um, right there. So that's 
those are the first four bars, and you and you can see how I've put everything together. I've just drawn you know locations and used the fader to fade out or to mute out where I don't want the sound to occur. And if I go into my piano roll, um, what you what you can see here is that I've very simply assigned members C5, D5, and E5, and then back to the C. I've assigned these notes in the piano roll for that channel, and this is what they sound like. And that's the first four bars of Rocket. Okay, what I've done is loaded up uh, a project I made with a uh, break sample in the Wave Traveler. And I'm just going to demonstrate how you would string together uh, <clears throat> these scratch sounds that you're making to uh, make it sound more complete. In this project, what I did is I assigned, is I created three uh, different scratch patterns. All of them are really simple. Uh, the first one, which I've assigned to um, C6, is what you're looking at on the screen, and it's basically a forward motion with a very uh, much faster downward motion, and there's a mute right at the top. In other words, I've muted out the part where it would transition from, from forward to backwards. So you're going to hear a forward note and then a real quick uh, downward pull. Okay really simple. On the uh, D6 note, uh, this is a little more complex, but uh, you know, it's, it's not really complicated once you understand what's, what's going on. Here I've made a forward pull, a forward push rather. I've muted out uh, this duration, then you can hear the pull back, then I've muted it out, then there's a push, mute, push, mute, and it sounds like this. And then I made a variation of that. Um, if you look closely where all these orange dots are, I'm going to play this version and then the variation, and you're going to see they're very close, but not quite the same. And the reason I did that is because I want to use the same pattern in, the, uh, in my sequence, but I don't want it to sound exactly the same. And this will give it a more human feel because I can play uh, one of these sequences and then play the other one a little bit later and it's not going to sound like a computer is doing it necessarily. And, uh, and, and we'll see that in a second. But you can see it's the same pattern. And then my third sequence sounds like this. Okay, and then I've also made uh, some variations on this particular one. Okay, but it's the same basic shape. Uh, I just, well, all I did is just move these uh, points a little bit to make it sound a little bit different. Okay, so from those three parts, let me just play you the three main parts again. Uh, there's, th there's this one, this one, and this one. Okay, so you see three very simple sounds. Um, and then here in the piano roll, you can see that I've sequenced these sounds in a specific way. Uh, there's C6. Okay, and then my variations are thrown in there as well. But you can see it's, it's kind of a busy looking pattern. Uh, and then I've thrown down a bass line and a drum beat to fill it in. And then I have, uh, I have this pattern of scratches, and then I have this pattern of scratches, which is just a little bit different. So uh, I have a busy pattern and a not so busy pattern uh, that, you can list, that you can hear. I'm going to leave it on this pattern, and I'm going to go ahead and play the song so you can hear what it sounds like.
So there you have it. How to do scratches with the Wave Traveler. Hopefully you've learned something new. And if not, if you know someone who needs to learn this, send them my way. Give them the URL to this tutorial. And uh, in the meantime, if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions for new tutorials that you'd like to see, please send them to me at nfxbeats at gmail.com. In the meantime, have fun with this music thing. That's what it's about. And goodbye.